good to see you all in the house of the Lord, and we want to welcome you uh, to homecoming 2018 here at Shiloh. And I have a good report for you. God is still good. Amen. Amen. We're honored to have you back home today, and I say this often, and I don't say it near enough. Home is a place that you never have to be invited to, but it is a place that you are always welcome. Amen. It doesn't matter where life takes you, it doesn't matter what journey you've been on, we want you to know we're glad you're home today. Amen. We want it to feel like home, amen, because we're in the Father's house, amen. amen. We all may put our feet under separate tables now, but we're all still part of the family of God. And if you stay here just a few minutes, Brother Terry's going to come and he's going to remind you, amen, that you're still part of that family. Whether you just come in the door for the very first time or whether you've got deep roots that run very deep in this soil around here, we're glad you're here today. And we, we've come today for no other reason. We've not come to be seen. We've not come to be heard. We have come to glorify the name of Jesus Christ and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Everything that we do, we are doing for His glory and for His honor. Amen. And we're just so glad that you're here today. We thank God that you chose to be here. You could have chose to go anywhere you wanted to go today and be anywhere you wanted to be. And I'm glad you chose to come by this way today. And, uh, we've got some that are coming in, still don't have a seat. So if you've got a seat beside of you, if you can just ease in and get nestled up, amen. You may be saving a, a seat for somebody in the choir, but I kind of got a feeling they're going to have to settle right here where they're at today. Uh, so if you've got a seat beside of you and you're saving it for your darling or your husband, um, he won't be jealous today. Just go and slide over and make way for your neighbor. We're going to enjoy some good close fellowship. Amen. We just thank God. Amen. We're glad you're here today. I want to also tell you that there is an overflow room here on this side and one on that side. The ladies will help you get there uh, when the time comes. But we want to get everybody. I do not in any way, shape, form, or fashion take it for granted those that have come before us. And I'm not going to even begin to start naming names because as sure as I do, I'm going to omit someone. But I want to tell you, your family members, your loved one that came before us, uh, we thank God for them. We haven't forgot their history. We haven't forgot the price that they paid that we're able to still be here on Ultra Mill Road. But I'm awful excited that uh, we were able to take what they handed us and continue on with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And our whole mission, our whole goal now is that the next generation that the Lord carries, that we'll be able to hand to them better than what was handed to us. I think that's all right, don't you? Amen. We cherish our past. We celebrate our past, and we're thankful for our past. But our past is not where we're going. We're headed in our future. God's got great things that have been revealed to the heart of man that he wants to do right here on Ultra Mill Road. And I thank God for those Native American families that had a vision all those years ago, but I'm glad that vision didn't die when they died. Amen. That'd been a good place to say amen right there. Amen. Because we're here to carry on that that God placed in their heart. Amen. amen. We're not living off of yesterday's victory. We're living off today's glory. Amen. amen. We're glad you're here this morning. And we want to go to the Lord this morning. We want to worship Him today in spirit and truth. Everything that we do today is to bring glory and honor to Him. And we really mean that through every song that's said, every word that is spoken. Yes. The word that's going to go forth today is all about Him receiving glory and honor. And I promise you, the Lowry's, when they get here in a little while, in our afternoon service, they're going to take us right into the heart of God. Uh, those folks will bless you. And I encourage you to stay. We're looking forward to a great meal here on the grounds. Uh, then somewhere around 2 o'clock, maybe just a hair after, we're going to assemble back in here in the sanctuary. You do not want to miss it. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't want to miss it. Amen. I want to ask you if you will stand again. Uh, I'm not going to ask you just to get out of your place like we normally do because if I get you out of your place, I may never get you back in your place. But just turn to that person standing right beside of you and say, hey, I'm glad to see you this morning. <laughs> Here in this house. We don't have to invite him. I've already felt him here. He's here today. 
But we just want to worship Him today in spirit and in truth. We want to give Him that opportunity today to do in our lives whatever it is that we need. I have a couple of things I need to tell you before we pray. The first thing I have to tell you is there are no, listen now, there are no big eyes and little U's in the kingdom of God. If you don't understand what I'm saying, I want you to know at a place called Calvary, Jesus Christ made you number one. For he said that he came, that whosoever will might be saved. That's me, guys. I'm that whosoever. My foot fits in that shoe. And that's who you are today. Heaven opened up and smiled today when God realized you were going to be here. Because, see, he gave his only begotten son that you and I could come and taste and see how good God is. Amen? The second thing I need to plant in your spirit today is, no doubt all of us in this building, in some, uh, uh, in some form or fashion, we have uh, a need in our lives. If maybe not on a personal level, we know someone that really has a serious need. If that's you this morning, just slip up that hand. Now, when you slip it up, hold it there just a minute. Go ahead and raise it high. God, I ain't ashamed of it. I got a need now. See, I believe we got a need. We ought to come boldly. That's what the Word said to the throne room of grace. But now what I'm about to ask you to do is an act of faith. Go ahead and wave goodbye to it. Because you see, when you bring it to Jesus, it no longer belongs to you. We are instructed by the Word of God to leave it there. Now, if you believe that, slide that hand in that neighbor's hand. We're going to do this for two reasons. The first reason, go ahead and put a little squeeze on that neighbor's hand. That is a general reminder that God is a very present help when I need Him. We lifted our hands and said, Lord, I need you. And you know what God's saying in our response? I'm here. Amen? Now, the second reason is we touch and we agree. Because God gave us authority. He said, whatever you bind on earth, I bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I loose in heaven. What you going to name it this morning? I'm going to name it answered. I'm going to name it praise God for what he's doing. Praise God for what he's done. I brought my petition. I've given it to you. Now I'm going to praise you for it. Let's do it together. Heavenly Father, we come into this house. We lift up our hearts unto you this morning. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Master of it all. We come today to celebrate you and all that you're doing. We are so blessed today to be a part of the family of God. Every man, woman, boy, and girl that walked through that door is part of that family today. They're an heir and a joint heir to the kingdom of God. If they haven't arrived this morning, you came that they could be a part of that family. And we worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We come today to celebrate you. We come today to welcome home folk back home. We come today to welcome new friends and family members into the family of God. We're all part of that family today through the blood of Jesus Christ. We've come today to celebrate our past, but we've come today with our future in focus. Believing you today, God, for all that you are. Have your way in this service and do that, God, that only you can do. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this house. Heal the sick. Open the hearts and minds of those that are troubled this morning. Speak a word in their innermost being. May the joy of the Lord abound in this house today. We ask it all, God, in accordance with your will. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we come to celebrate you. Let everything that be said, son, or done bring glory and honor to you and edify the body of believers today. Let it be so this day in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for being the God of yesterday. But I'm glad you're still the God of today. And if time tarries, you'll be the God of tomorrow. We rejoice in you right now in the name of Jesus. We ask all of these things now, Father, in accordance with your will. As the body of believers simply says, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. I want to ask you, if you will, today, I, our first song, just pick up a hymn on there, is going to be... Uh, page 235, He Set Me Free. How I many of you been made free today? Yeah. Amen. Let's worship Him like we mean it today. Amen.
beautiful congregation this morning. Amen. Amen. All right, do me a favor, y'all. Just turn to somebody right here and tell me love them this morning. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about. Yeah, that's what it's, that's what it's about. Amen. 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 Christ said that, uh, that's how others to know that we follow him. Amen. So, um, you know, thank you so much. Thank you for coming and being a part of the homecoming today. And as I said, you're just a beautiful, wonderful congregation this morning. And uh, just uh, just know you, make yourself at home. All right, because you're at home, part of Shiloh family, as a, a pastor alluded to you. We don't have we don't have visitors, okay? When you come through the door, you're just going to adopt it, whether you know it or not. And you just become part of the Shiloh family. So y'all make yourself at home, and y'all feel free to worship the Lord you feel that this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's try that one more time. Amen. 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 That sounds a whole lot Excuse me, a whole lot better. And so at this time, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, continue with our worship service with the tithes and offering. Ask the ushers if they would to come at this time.
I get out of the car at work, I say a prayer. And I ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins. Um, I say, you, you know what they are and you know they are me. Um, that's the same thing as saying thank you for not throwing the clay away. I, uh, I'm thankful that I get more than one shot at getting it right. Maybe maybe one day the Lord will see fit and let me in the gates and, and, and we'll go from there. Darren? morning and I want to tell you God is God is doing some good things around here we celebrate what he's doing uh, we realize that we couldn't do it without those that have come before us but I'm also keenly aware we couldn't do it without those that are here now Amen. I'm talking awful lot about those that have come before us but I appreciate the team that God has surrounded me with Amen. faithful Amen. faithful people that just, walk, when I walk in the building, I'm just blown away by the sacrifice they've made 
and giving their time, energy, and efforts. And there again, I'm not going to start naming names because I'm not about to leave out one of them because they're here to hear it. Uh, but I do love each one of them that God has positioned beside of us. And uh, we're, we're excited about all that is going on. And I want to give you a, a personal invitation. And uh, the ladies are going to be coming today. And they're going to be receiving these and actually standing at both doors when you go out today because you are invited next Sunday uh, to an exciting surprise event here uh, next Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And uh, we that's all I'm going to tell you about. It, uh, it says get the answers to a million-dollar question. You see, we have a reserve note for you. Uh, this will be a church service unlike anything you have ever been to before, we promise. Join us Sunday at Shiloh Pentecostal <coughs> Holiness Church, 2271. You know where it's at. You're here. We want you to come <laughs> next Sunday morning to a... Now listen, if you've got a home church, if you're, God's planted you somewhere and that's where you're at, I'm not talking to you. Uh, but if you don't have a place that you dwell on Sunday morning, we want you to be here next Sunday morning. Amen. This is something I'm asking you to do. Even if you've got a home church and you're not going to be with us next Sunday morning, I want you to take this card anyhow. Because what I'm going to tell you is this is not your card. Say it with me. This is not my card. Everybody in this building today is going to get a card. But this is not my card. My card. How many of you know somebody that is unchurched? Amen. Three of you. <laughs> I want to tell you, you need to broaden your horizons because Jesus said go into all the world. You need to get out of your Sunday school group once in a while and realize there are people around you that are lost. Amen. There are people around you that are unchurched. There are people around you that don't have a sanctuary that they go to. This is their call. You got a co-worker, you got a friend, you got a neighbor. Maybe you've been trying to get them to go to you, with you to your church for years. Give them this card. Maybe they won't go with you, but maybe they'll come here. We're in this thing all together, folks. If they're not going to come to Shiloh, I want them to go with you. Amen. Amen. Ain't no big eyes or little news in the kingdom of God. Amen. It's about building the kingdom of God, and we're looking for one more Amen. intention. You've been invited. These ladies are going to give these to you at the end of the service today. We're going to have a couple of ladies at both doors. And uh, they're going to make sure everybody in this building has got one. Remember, this is not my call. It belongs to whoever God places on your heart to slide it in their hands and invite them to something out of this world. Because next Sunday morning is going to be an amazing service here. Enough about that. I just want to say we're glad you're here today. We're not here today to come and eat fried chicken. Somebody said, well, yeah, all right. <laughs> We're not here to worry about Grandma's pastry. <laughs> I can't get it off my mind, friend. That's all right. You ought to have been here when they were toting it in out there. I'm telling you, I'm about to starve to death. So I feel you, We're glad you're here this morning. We believe you're here today because the Holy Spirit has a word he wants you to do. Amen. And not because I'm standing in this pulpit, because I'm absolutely nothing but a wretched sinner saved by the grace of God Amen. and picked by God to deliver His Word Amen. this morning. And I stand in awe of what God is. Not because I'm anything, but He's everything. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor this morning and I want you to say these words. God, God knows, knows how, how to do, to do a, thing. a thing. I want to talk to you today about a thing. Something is about to happen. Amen. Amen. God knows how to do a thing. Amen. Now, you're going to just have to stay with me today because I'm going to tell you I have a revelation from God about our future. And I got to tell you a little something. I got to tell you a little something about you today. Everybody in here in this building knows a little something about you. Everybody in this building, some of you know a little bit more about others than, than, than maybe even I know. Hey, some of you can run up here and tell me some stories about some folks inside of you now to make us all laugh. <laughs> we all got those stories. That's not the thing I'm talking about today. You see, I believe that God is about to do something 
at Shiloh on Ultra Mill Road. Now I want to tell you, we are not dressed this morning for where we're at. We're dressing for where we're going. Amen. And God is up to something. Uh, Donald Robinson, please pray for Brother Donald. He's in Goldsboro right now and he needs a miracle. But I know a man that's able to provide a miracle. Amen. I want you to just go ahead and agree with me right now and say, God, you can. And I believe you will. In the name of Jesus, let it be done. Now, church, I'm going to tell you, if you're going to pray, there ain't no sense in doubting. And if you're going to doubt, there ain't no sense in praying. Amen. We need to get our priorities right. But I want to tell you today, my God knows how to do a thing. My God knows how to do a thing. And there, there's something about to happen here at Shiloh. But I want you to understand, it ain't nothing but a thing. Now, i got to talk to you about a thing a little bit this morning before we can go any further. You see, when I was a little boy, uh, I, I grew up in the Church of God, and we didn't go to the beach. We went to the coast. Uh, some of you Pentecostals may identify with that. Uh, I was always bum puzzled by that, what the difference was between the coast and the beach, but there was a distinct difference. Uh, some of you younger folks don't understand what I'm talking about today, but you older folks know what I'm talking about. We went to the coast, amen. We didn't, we didn't go to the beach. We were saved. Amen. And, uh, we went to the coast. And, uh, when we would get down to the water, wherever it's at, call it whatever you want to, uh, we all were out on the same sand. Uh, same God looking at us. Uh, we get sometimes we just got to get over for ourselves and go on and say, God, you got this, Amen. Ain't you glad God's got you? He didn't go away and say, Thank you, Lord. But uh, my mama would say to me, Son, get your things. Now my mama didn't have to tell me, Go get your sand bucket, go get your shovel, go get your fishing pole, uh, go get your sunscreen, go get your hat. Go get your swimming trunks. When we were getting ready to go to the coast, she said, go get your things, and I went and got my things. Anything that I could think of that I thought I might would need on it. Now, listen, I didn't go get mountain climbing shoes because we were going to the beach. you got to know the difference in the thing that you're interested in. Now, I don't know what your thing is, but the thing that God is wanting to do here at Shiloh may look a little bit different than what I'm accustomed to. It may look a little bit different than what I'm used to. And to be honest with you, you know, in 1907, if God had done that thing then, those folks probably couldn't have understood that thing because it was a different generation and a different group of people. But God is about to do a new thing here on Ultra Mill Road. And whatever God wants to do, I want to be a part of it. Because I ain't dressed for where I'm at. I'm dressed for where I'm going. Amen. And I'm going wherever God wants to go. How about you? Amen. Now I want to call your attention this morning to Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 19. Amen. I want to talk to you just a moment. It says, see. See. Look. Pay attention. Hey, I got you here now. I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way. Somebody say he'll make a way. I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Now, before we can get into what God really wants to tell us, i got to bring you up. Where I come from, they call it up the snub. Uh, if you don't understand what that means, that means I'm going to make it relevant to you, okay? Uh, I'm about to bring you up the snuff. Uh, you see, we got to get ready for the invasion, that thing that God is about to do. In 1979, I went on dated myself right there, I was a senior in high school. Uh, yeah, next year, 40 years. And I know y'all standing there scratching your head. How more 32 year old man than I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Help us, God. 1979, I received a teacher's assignment. And this is what she said Write a paper describing what things are going to look like in the year. 2000. Now you got to understand if she just said write about a thing called an 8 track I could have covered that. Because I knew what it looked like. Some of you are looking at me like what is he talking about? <laughs> Ask your mama when you get home. <laughs> if she just said 
right about a, a slapstick shift, I could have told her about that. Right about a positive traction rear end, I could have wrote about that. If she have said wrote about a right about a 400 big block, I could have wrote about that. If she have said right about a baseball, I could have covered her a paper on that. If she have said describe a football game, I could have told her all about that. If she have said write a paper on that, hush, Tammy, don't close your ears just a minute. If she have said write a paper about how pretty the cheerleaders are, <laughs> I wrote pages on that. <laughs> She said, write about a thing that you don't know about. Write about something that you ain't seen. Write about something that you can't even imagine. <laughs> and I come to drop in your spirit this morning that God said unto him, that is able, somebody say he's able, yes. to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond yes. that that I can think oh, or yes. imagine. What I'm trying to tell you is the thing that God wants to do in us and through us, we can't even imagine it. We can't even comprehend it. We can't even think what God wants to do in our lives. The Word of the Lord tells us in Isaiah 43 and 19, He said, See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. You see, we can't even envision the thing that God wants to do. You see, your yesterday is about to turn into your tomorrow. And I want you to understand that thing that your tomorrow looks like, it's not quite entered your mind yet what it's going to be. But God already sees it. Amen. Amen. Hello, church. Amen. God already knows what your tomorrow looks like. Amen. Amen. I want to remind some of you in here this morning, back yonder in your yesterday, when you couldn't see where you're at now, God already saw you then where you are now. Amen. Now, how many of you in here can rejoice and praise God over that? Because I'm here to tell you, I ain't always been where I am now. I ain't always looked like I look now. I'm not talking about the outward man. I'm talking about the inward man. Amen. But way back then, when I was lost and undone, a poor, wretched sinner deserving death, hell, and the grave, God looked at me and said, Hold on a minute. There's something shut up in him that I'm going to use for the glory of God. Amen. Though I couldn't see that thing, though I couldn't imagine that thing, God said, It is in him, and I'm going to bring it out of him in the due season that it comes forth. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. First uh, Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. I'm going to talk to you about that thing. It says, however, as it is written, no eye have seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who oh, love him. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Let me get on back and talk to you this minute. But I don't believe some of you get that you still got your mind on that fried chicken. I want you to understand right now that God has got a future that you can't imagine. The Bible said, I ain't seen it. No ear has it heard it. No mind can even conceive the things that God has prepared for you and I. Now, I know we get excited and we begin to celebrate that great future that we have. When those dear old saints out there that we love their memory and we're here today celebrating it. When that day comes and those graves burst open and Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is coming back to take up out of that ground that that belongs to Him. And we're going to be caught up together to meet Him. And I don't know about you, but I get excited when I begin to take a, uh, to think about that day. Amen. But I come to tell you, God has not just promised us a sweet by and by. He said, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. God's got a kingdom that He wants to establish in mind and your heart that we can go forth and do things that we can't even wrap our mind. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It'd be a good place for me to tell you this. And I'm not going I'm not saying this to be boastful to you because I'm a humble servant of the most high God, if I recognize. Amen. And I want you to understand God is amazing. God is absolutely amazing. God can do 
whatever we allow him to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. God can provide whatever we allow him to provide. Amen. Amen. I realize you're a little uncomfortable, but we ain't dressed for where we're at. We're dressed for where we're going. Amen. And we're going right next door into a new facility that's over there. Amen? Amen. We're not building that facility so we can spread out and have plenty of room. We're building that facility so God can show up and fill the house. Because if we lift him up, the Bible said all men will be drawn unto him. Amen. You see, the purpose is that those that are lost and undone can enter into a relationship with a man named Jesus Christ. They can't even conceive where they're at today that they're going to be a part of what God wants to do. A bit more than me and you could have conceived years ago that we were going to be here today. And furthermore than that, you beautiful young ladies, I'm not even going to talk about y'all because y'all still beautiful. <laughs> Some of these guys around here, Bruce, they don't look quite like they looked 30 years ago. I don't know what it is about women. They retain themselves. We men, we just fall apart. You know, what was up here, it just drops down somewhere. And the best of us catch it. That's the best of them. That's the best you can do with it. Just catch it and hold on. I, I want to help you understand today. The Bible said it's written, no man. No eye. Nobody. They ain't even got a clue what God wants to do for us. Church, I want you to understand today, we, 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 we can't imagine that thing because, you see, a thing is something we don't even know about. That thing that God has prepared for us, we can't wrap our mind around. We can't envision a thing until it becomes a reality. Hello? Yep. I look at you and I say, hey, go there and fellowship home and get me that thing. There's a lot of things over there. Yep. Amen? Amen? I tell you to go get me that thing. What you gonna go over there and get? But if I give you a description of it and I give you a reality of it, you can go over there and pick it up. Amen. What I'm trying to explain to you today, God's got a thing that we can't imagine. God's got a thing that we can't see. We, we got an idea what it looks like, but we can't even wrap our mind around it. You see, uh, He was there. Oh, somebody say He's there all the time. Uh, I'm telling you, back yonder, when we couldn't imagine where we're at today, God still had a thing planned. Amen. Amen. I'll say that again. God had a thing planned. Amen. And the thing that he had planned with those guys, eight families met out here under a tree in 1907 and began this thing that we're in right now. They couldn't have imagined what we got sitting right here right now. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you, in 1907, when God birthed it in those eight Native American families, I'm telling you, God already knew this thing. Amen. Amen. And I come to tell you today that the thing that's ahead of us, God already sees it. He's already got it laid out in the very presence of our enemies. Amen. And it's time we start speaking life into it and believing God for the thing that He has prepared. Amen. Don't give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. You see, I believe you got to begin to thank Him for that thing before that thing ever shows up. Amen. You see, we ought to praise Him for the thing He done in our lives when we didn't even know there was a thing there. Uh oh. Because, see, we ain't always look like we look right now. I thank God that when I was lost and undone, when I didn't even have an identity in my own self, didn't even know who I was or what I was doing or what I was thinking, God already had plans for me. Amen. Amen. And though I couldn't see, I want somebody to go in your mind right now. Somebody needs to go back to the place you were when God found you. Church, don't you understand? Somebody say, oh, I found Jesus. You ain't found him. He ain't never been lost. That's right. He's always known right where he was at. You were lost and undone, the word said, and Jesus Amen. came where you were and found you. Amen. Yeah. Pulled you out of that place that you were. But I'm going to tell you, when God showed up on your scene, I need to thank God this morning for that thing that he did long before I ever realized that it was a thing. Amen. I come to tell you today, God had a purpose and a plan for each one of us sitting in here, even when it didn't look like nothing. Amen. I believe we ought to give him a hand clap of praise today for that thing that he did before we even realized it was a thing. You see, God knows how to do a thing. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell them that. You don't even believe it yourself. You ain't convinced, man. <laughs> Amen. Tell them again. God knows how to do a thing. Amen. If you ain't convinced, go and convince yourself. God knows how to do a thing. Amen. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. 
Somebody need to be reassured of that. Let me give it to you, Matthew 19 and verse 26. Uh, it said, Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but with God, all what? Amen. Things are possible. Amen. That thing that you can't think, that thing you can't imagine, that thing you can't wrap your mind around, God says, hey, I already got it prepared. Jesus said when your enemy shows up, God shows up. Yeah. And when God shows up, he yeah. spreads a table yeah. in the very presence of our enemy. He didn't say he fixed the table, he said he spread it. He already had it fixed at a place called Calvary when Jesus Christ was suspended between heaven and earth, laid down his life and looked up to heaven and said, it is finished. You know what he was saying? I got a thing done for you. Amen. That when the enemy rolls in, in your darkest night, in your lowest place, I'm going to show up in the presence of your enemy and lay a thing out in the presence of the devil. Amen. Oh, I thank God today for the thing that he's done. Amen. God's got a thing for the men's ministry. Amen. amen. Well, remember, God's got a thing for this church. Amen. amen. Yes. Where, where you at? God's got a thing for this choir and this music. Amen. I, I don't know where you at. God's got a thing for your ministry team. Amen. amen. God's got a thing for your caring and giving ministry, amen. brother. I know what the weatherman's forecasting for now. I've done seen it, and I've been praying for you all day. God, get Ricky's heart. Get Ricky's heart. We ain't worried about this, Ricky Barefoot, because God's got a thing. Amen. amen. I'm telling you, see, God's got a thing prepared for us. Anybody believe what I'm telling you this morning? I'm telling you, no matter what I'm saying, I'm telling you what thus saith the word of God. Amen. God's got a thing for us. And I want to join him in what he is trying to do in my life. Amen. I want Shiloh Church to join him in our future that he's already laid out for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, I believe there's a time, and I believe there's a people, and I believe there's a place appointed for a thing. Amen. Amen? Yes. You, you don't just get saved because you wake up this morning and decide you're going to get saved. The Bible said no man. No man comes to the Father said the Spirit draws him. There's a time. God went on and told us in the Ecclesiastes, he said there's a season and a time for everything. Amen? But I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost is shaking us around here and we're ready for the thing that God has for us and we're stepping into our next. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes you can't go to, oh, hallelujah. Sometimes you can't go to your neck till you turn loose of your last. Amen. 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 All that's over there, every bit of it is paid for. Y'all said he wanted me here today so I could pay for what he's got out there. No, I don't. I don't. It's paid for. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. I'm saying that, folks. It ain't about me. I'm a drunk, horrible. My daddy was a disabled man. I come when I lay down in bed at night and didn't even have food in the house. Amen. Folks, I hear my mom and daddy back here in the bedroom, brother. You hear me? I hear my mom and daddy back here in the bedroom praying. God, we need groceries in this house. My sister sitting back on, she can tell it. Mom and daddy got in there and prayed. That day, somebody say, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. That day, God got a hold of a lay minister's heart across the river over in Cumberland County. I heard a Buick. One of them later. 225s, I believe it was. Help me here, lady. One of the first ones of them I ever seen where you'd let the trunk lay it down and you better get your fingers out of the way. <laughs> them things you could put four bodies <laughs> in the back of them. You know how I know that? <laughs> My first one, three feet on the yard. Put five in the front seat, five in the back seat. That's ten going in the drive in mood. Set four in the front seat. Ten screamies. Red coats this morning, we better pray this morning. That you 
Buick shot up in the yard and I heard that honk. I can still hear that Buick honk. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost had showed up in 1797. Because a man and a woman that was in touch with God. And when they spoke a thing, oh, Ooh. hallelujah. <laughs> when they spoke a thing, you know what heaven did? Heaven said, hey, we're under contract with them by the blood of the Lamb. They're redeemed by the grace of God, saved, born again, living right, living holy. You read the book. When you get in a covenant with God, a blood covenant, when you speak, heaven backs up what you say. The Word said you can say whatsoever you will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. Come on, Daddy, pray. Lay minister from across the county over in Cumberland County showed up in his building. My first public job was a bag boy at the Piggly Wiggly. That was where I got my training. I got my training under a Holy Ghost prayer. Because when he showed up, he popped the trunk on that big old mule. I told him groceries for 20 minutes. I love I love that mule. That's God. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. That's a thing that I can't imagine. That's a thing I can't wrap my mind around. But I'm telling you, the God of that thing is the God of your faith today. Yeah. Whatever it is you need in your life, it's time for you to rise up and say, Hey, I'm a bold, born again child of the God of heaven, redeemed yeah. by the grace of God. Yeah. And King Jesus said, I'm an heir to the throne of heaven. I can ask whatsoever I will in my name, yeah. in my name, and it oh, shall be done unto me. God, I'm going to speak a thing today in my life. I'm going to speak a thing today over my church. I'm going to speak a thing today over my children. Today comes a new thing on Audrey Mill Road. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Honey, I preached a message here a few years ago on homecoming. Uh, maybe one or two of you might remember. I guarantee you my wife remembers it because she's got it wrote down and she can tell me how many was here that Sunday. She didn't tell me how much offering was that Sunday. She got it rubbed down. I preached the thing and said, hey, if we're going to have it like they had it, we're going to have to do it like they done it. You know what they did? They began to seek a God that was able to do a thing. And they began to put life into that they were asking God for, and they began to speak a thing. Amen. And when they began to speak that thing, God reacted to what they were saying and opened the windows of heaven and poured out upon them that they could not think or imagine. Amen. I come to tell you he's the same yesterday, and he's still the same today. God is waiting on a group of people on Ultramill Road to get a hold of the thing. Amen. What's it look like, preacher? I don't know. What's it feel like, preacher? I can't tell you. But God already knows what that thing is. And he's waiting on you and I to declare it in the house of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm preaching a lot better than y'all shouting. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You see, I may not know what that thing is going to look like, but God already knows what that thing is. Amen. Listen now. God told Noah. He said, you build a boat. Noah said, what's a boat? He never seen a boat before. Didn't need a boat. And rain where he was at. God said, build a boat. What's a boat? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you exactly how to build it. I'm going to give you the dimensions of it. You build that boat. Okay, God, I'll do that. But first off, now that I'm building something that I don't know what it is, tell me why I'm building it. He said, because it's going to rain. He said, what's rain? <laughs> ain't rain, brother. Hello? God said it's just a thing. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. Somebody say God can do a thing. <laughs> What are you talking about a thing? He said, well, the sky's going to open up. The earth is going to burst forth. Water's going to come from above, and water's going to come from beneath. And it's going to flood all this earth. And, and, and when it happens, you're going to need that boat, that thing, to preserve you. Oh, hallelujah. I come to tell you today, God still got this. Amen. God's still in control. God's still got this thing fashioned out and worked out. Amen. So I want to just lay it out for you. 
God told Noah to build a thing, a boat, that he had never seen. God told Noah to prepare for something that had never happened. And God told Noah to build something that had never been built. You see, to prepare for something that had never happened and to do something that had never been done, it takes God. God said, I know what I'm doing. Noah, you don't know what I'm doing, but I'm about to do a thing. Thank you, oh, hallelujah. In his disposition, it went on the past and in here. It, God said, I'm going to renew a thing. Now I've destroyed a thing, now I'm going to renew a thing. And here come Abraham. Abraham back. God said, I'm about to do a new thing. Abraham said, What's the thing look like? Well, it's going to be a boy. Have you lost your ever-loving mind? You know how old I am? Now, Sarah's in the tent, and she's hearing this, and when God lays the thing out there, she goes to life. I've had folks in the last eight years to laugh at my thing. <laughs> but I come to tell you, God still got a thing. Oh, I come to tell you, God still got a thing. Amen. God has still got a remnant of people that we ain't got. I don't care who's laughing at your thing. Look at God and say, God, you still got a thing. Oh, you still got a thing. And I'm believing you today for that thing that you have prepared for me, God. I, mm, then he said, hey, I'm going to give you that thing. Well, sure enough, he gave him that thing. His name was Isaac. And then the next thing he looked at him, he said, all right, get him and let's go up on the mountain. I ain't going to kill him. Hello? The very thing that he said, I'm going to give you and multiply your seed, now you're going to have to give it back to him. Uh-oh. Here we go. This is just hard right here. Because, see, sometimes God wants to do a thing in us, but he can't do a thing in us till we give him everything we got. Oh, oh, I'm telling you, there's somebody here needs to give him everything you got. Oh, Amen. I ain't studying you, Walt. Yeah. I ain't just read the screen just when I say stuff like that. But I come to tell you today, my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. When we need it, brother, he'll sell one. Amen. Yeah. And if he don't sell one, he'll give one away and bless somebody. And out of that blessing, I think I already put it in the offering plate. You know, our, our kids got together and blessed somebody this year. Vacation Bible school? Well, guess what? It doesn't come back to us. Oh, hallelujah. Press down. Amen. Run it over. Amen. You can't outgive God. No. You can't outgive God. No. Right. I come to tell you, if you give God everything you've got, God will give you more than you ever thought you could hold. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you today, God wants to do a new thing around Shiloh, but some of us got to give him the thing we got. Amen. We got to give him our talent and let God anoint him and use him for the glory of God. We got to give him our knowledge so that we may be able to teach and train those that are coming behind us. Amen. We got to give him everything we got. Amen. We got to give him our seat in the sanctuary so he can bring somebody else in and set them down in that place. Amen. We got to give him our parking place in the parking lot so he can bring a new family in and let them be renewed in their spirit. Amen. We got to let God do that thing that he wants to do. Amen. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm trying to set this plane down. All right, here you go. Let me get on up here. Somebody say, I serve a God, I serve God. that can do a thing. I want to ask you a question. What's bigger than that thing? That thing that you, you've been talking about, that thing you've been hearing about, what's bigger than it? Well, preacher, <laughs> I get tickled beyond measure when they say, well, preacher. Well, I know that thing's coming up then. Well, we tried that. That's right. We tried. But God's got a thing. Amen. And when God's got a thing, no matter what I've done. Oh, hallelujah. I can tell you today, when God's got a thing, God will show us a thing or two. Amen. You see, there, somebody said, well, preacher, I'd love to do, but I've got so many enemies. Oh, good Lord. It's time to shout when they show up on your double step ready to fight you. Because you know what God said? God said, who can do it against you? If I be for you, who against you? When I got a thing to do in your life, it don't matter who shows up. When I got a thing to do in your life, it don't matter the damnation they speak of you. It don't matter what they say. You know why? Because I got a thing to do. Amen. And I am able to do a thing. Now, listen very carefully. In Luke chapter 16, verse 16. 
Now I'll show you something. Now we done left the dispensation of Abraham. I didn't have time really to elaborate on that, but he carried that old boy up there, or laid him on that altar, and when he did, there was old uh, around him, okay, the sacrifice called up there in that field. You know, you know the reason why that goat was there? Because when he stopped, before they went up another day's journey, he looked at those men that he carried with him, and you know what he said? He said, we're going to go yonder, and we're going to do a thing. We're going to go over yonder, and God's going to do a thing. And we're coming back. Hello? Wait a minute. Now, God said you're going up yonder to lead your boy. And, but he had faith that God could do a thing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, I said now, the law and the prophet were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God, somebody say, since that time. Since that time. Amen. And we ain't under the law no more. Somebody say, praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I don't get killed today because I say the wrong thing. Won't be many in here to preach to if that happens. That's right. And I don't know who to be preaching to them, brother. It won't be me. Because I've said some wrong things before. Amen. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man presseth in to it. You know how we're going to have that new thing? We're going to have to press in to it. Amen. We're going to have to lay our thing aside. Yeah. And we got to say, God, not my way, Amen. but your way. Amen. There was a thing done at a place called Calvary. Oh, the Savior of the world came to that place, and he was tired and weary and wore out and had dealt with about all he could handle. And he said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup, this thing, pass from me. But God said, hold on, i got a better thing. And you know what Jesus said? I give you my nothing, and I pick up your everything. Amen. Not my will, but your will be done. Yes. Now, folks, I want to stop right here, and I want to make sure I do something. Because I don't like my homecomings to come and go if I don't do this. And I don't say none of this that I'm about to say to put a hamper or a damper on any spirit that's here, because God is here. Your family of Shiloh Church, and anywhere, any time in the history of Shiloh Church, if the man of God first, including me, and every pastor that's ever come before me has failed you in any way, I apologize to you publicly and openly. And I sincerely say to you, we're sorry to you. Yeah. And if any member, past or present, of Shiloh Church has ever let you down, ever hurt you, in any way, I want to publicly beg you for your forgiveness yeah. today. Yeah. And I want to say it's time to let it go Amen. and push on in. Amen. Well, the preacher must know something. I don't know a thing and don't want to know a thing because God's already got a thing. And his thing is better than my thing Amen. and your thing. So let's lay our thing down and press into his thing. Amen. Amen. I don't make me say that again because I can't about say that. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's you, God. That's you. Now listen, press in to that thing. You see, the kingdom is preached and we must press into it because it has been av made available to us. God is going to do a new thing. I'm closing. John chapter 9 and verse 2. Listen. It said, and his disciples asked him. Now, this story here is a guy laying over there. And, and this guy here is blind. Okay? And they come up on this blind boy. And his disciples asked him, and this is what he said. Hey, hey, Jesus. Hey, hoss. Hey, bro. They hung out together, okay? I don't look at you, Marlon, and say, that, Oh, thou brother Marlon, I'm so glad to see you today. <laughs> You know, we speak in that King James when we get spiritual. This is real. Hey, hey, Jesus. Master, teacher. <coughs> Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest 
master in him. Amen. Church, I want to tell you, there's some people around that have been become so used to seeing me and you the way we are that they can't see us no other way. Hello. Well, bless God, that church over there, they've been, they've run about this or that, or they've had this problem or that problem. You see, folks, you don't matter what problem you got. When God shows up to do a thing, Amen. it's that he might receive glory Amen. and honor yeah. and yeah. praise. Yeah. Yeah. And when we get to the place that the only thing we're interested in, come on, Brother Nathan, yeah. the only thing we get interested in is for God to do a thing. In our lives. Jesus had said, Neither hath this man sinned nor his prayer, but the works of God should be made manifest in us. Amen. Now, the people around you may see you as you are, but they don't know the thing that God's got for you. You see, God knows that He's about to see the glory of God revealed. Here's where I'm at. Today, some of us in this building today are dealing with generational curses that we've been dealing with for generations after generation, yeah. after generation. Yeah. And we've got so much baggage when we show up to God that we can't even worship Him in spirit and truth. Oh, we got all this stuff. Well, Mama was this way. Daddy's this way. If we ain't careful, we're going to be this way. Sure enough, we will as long as we let that generational curse have power and dominion over us. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I ain't got to be like that. You know why? Because God's got a new thing He wants to do with me. Amen? I come to tell you today, it, it don't matter what your scene looks like today. Well, preacher, I'd like to give to that building project out there, but I just ain't got a lot. God ain't interested in a lot. He's interested in a little that God can take in His hands and do a new thing with. Amen. I ain't got time to go through all this. Amen? But I'm telling you, God wants to do a new thing. Amen. Well, preacher, I ain't got but just a little couple of fish and about three little hush puppies. We'll give it to God and we'll feed them all to it. Let's do a new thing. Let's do a new thing. Amen. Anybody want to see God do a new thing? Amen. 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 I don't care how many doors have been closed in your life. God wants to open a new door. Amen. I don't care how many people's turned you down in your life. Say, God wants to say yes. Amen. All right. For God to do a new thing, we've got to do something different. Stand in your feet. I'm concluding it just like this right here this morning. Amen. I ain't got time. I ain't got space up here to give you an hour call and I will give you time because every one of you is in here ought to want, ought to want God to do that thing in your life. Amen. Now we're about to proclaim something. Now what I want to explain to you, this might be a little different for some of you. But I'm going to tell you what does say the Word of God. Here it is. The Word of God says, when I speak, there's power in what I say. Y'all agree with what God said? You see, when you speak, it carries weight and authority. When a mama and daddy has a child, they name it. And when they name it, they call it that. Now, I know sometimes nicknames come along, and that's okay. But whatever we name it, we call it. Hello? What I'm trying to tell you is whatever the day you name it, God's going to call it. Because he said, I give you power of life and death in your tongue. When we say God is going to do a new thing on Ultra Mill Road, we got to say it. we got to speak it, and we got to believe it. When we say God's going to do a new thing in our house, we got to say it, we got to speak it, and we got to believe it. When we say God's going to do a new thing in our church, we got to say it, we got to speak it, and we got to believe it. Amen? Amen? It is a decree when I say it. It becomes a decree. We're going to close this service today. I'm good. I got, I got five minutes. We're going to close. You got them for me, Darren? Hey, thing. You know why we're going to say it? Because God said, if you say it, I'll back it up. Amen. God already said, I'll do a thing in you. Yes. But he's waiting on me and you to agree with him. He's waiting on me and you to birth it, to put life into it, to speak it. Amen? I could have walked around this little girl right here. Come here, baby. Come here. 
Ain't she beautiful? Don't give her a hand, Blaster. I don't give her a hand. I could have walked around this little girl back in 1980 all I wanted to. Now, see, when she got out of the car out there that day and come walking down the sidewalk, I'm standing out there with a gang of boys. They lost my attention right then, Bruce. She come walking by, and I looked at that gal, and I said, hey! Look at that pretty thing. That's exactly what I said. That's the best line I had, Grace. <laughs> she dropped her head and kept walking. There was about five or six of us out there. You know what they did tomorrow? Every one of them went laughing and snickering at me. I said, laugh. I'm going to marry that girl. That's the thing. God already had laid that thing out for me because he knew I was going to need her today. <laughs> I could have said I'm going to marry her and never done nothing else about it. You know what, Timmy? I want to have her. I had to do something about that thing. So the next thing I went on in there was walk right on in that store. I ain't never had no sense. <laughs> and I looked at her aunt who was running the office where I worked at, and I said, hey, that's your niece that just walked in here? She said, yeah. I said, tell her I'm going to be at her house on Saturday night at 7 o'clock to pick her up. We're about to do this thing. Turn around and walk out. That's all I had, brother. I'm telling you, that's all I had. I pulled up over there on Saturday night. She ready. I'm going to do a thing. Now, if y'all don't think God can't do a thing, I didn't deserve her. I didn't look good enough for her. My daddy told her tonight, I went and told my daddy that I, 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 I asked her to marry me. My daddy turned around in the living room, looked at her and said, hey girl, you need to think that boy's got no money. <laughs> I thought to myself, daddy, she already knows I'm broke. <laughs> you got to put life into a thing. You got to speak. Hello. We're going to decree a thing today. Preacher, this is a little strange. I know it, but you got to speak it, church. If we're going to have that thing that God has prepared for us, we're going to have to put life. Let me hold it there. We're going to decree a thing. And I want you to say these with me this morning. First, I'm going to lead them to you. And I want them to identify with your spirit. Everything in my life is finding its appointed place. Listen. Everything under my roof is moving towards blessings. Everything I need is moving in my direction. Everything that needs to go is going. Everything paralyzed in me, you see when something's paralyzed, it ain't doing what it's supposed to do. When our legs are paralyzed, they won't hold us up. They're meant to hold us up. But when they paralyze, it won't happen. Everything paralyzed in me is going to be healed. You know what God said? God said, say <laughs> to the mountain, be thy removed and cast into the sea. And if you doubt not, what did he say? It shall be I want that new thing that God's got. I don't even know what it looks like. I can't wrap my mind around it. I can't imagine it. We're going to say these things. You ain't got to say it. Because, honey, if you say it just because I'm asking you to say it, you might as well say, Billy Go Bob City. <laughs> it's going to mean just as much. But if you'll wrap your heart and your mind around it, you know what God said? God said, when you speak a thing, yeah, I'm going to back it up. Yes, yes. Everything. Amen. Everything. 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 If you believe it, say it with me now. Everything in my life is finding its appointed place. Say it again. Everything in my life is finding its appointed place. Next. Everything under my roof is moving. Towards blessings. Say it again. Everything under my roof 
church, I'm going to tell you something. This ain't about height. It's about me and you wrapping our mind and saying, God, you're about to do a thing. <coughs> now what I'm going to ask you to do, those ladies are getting everything ready. Once we finish, once Nathan is finished here, we're going to ask the blessing. And then we're going to go to our place. But before we do, I want us this morning to just talk for just a moment. Right now, there's nobody else in this building but you and God. That's a hard thing to imagine, but that's it. Right now, just you and God. Now, whatever that thing is, you may see that. You may be here this morning. You may be lost. You may not know Jesus. And I want to tell you, God wants to do a new thing in you. He wants to bring life and to bring it to you more abundantly. And I'm telling you, there's no greater thing that needs to be done. Because you're not going nowhere else until you get that thing set up. Amen? If you need him today, you just talk to him right now. Your heart and say, God, I need you to do that thing. Whatever it is in your life that you need God to do today, you talk to him right now about that thing. Maybe you're dealing with generational curses. Maybe you're dealing with things. That, you know, it's always been that way. I'll tell you, God, come and do a new thing. Maybe you can't even wrap your mind around it. You may not even know what it looks like. I'm telling you, God wants to do a new thing to you today. Let's just take about three minutes right now and talk to him right out of our heart. Ain't nobody here but you and God. Let's just talk to him. Heavenly Father. God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus.